Kayla Chase up in the house. What's up, dude? Not too much, buddy. Well, it's good to have you here. It's good to be here. June, thanks for coming back. Of course, pleasure. So how's everybody doing this week? I'm feeling pretty, uh, pretty aroused. Yeah. Pretty aroused. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How are you feeling, June? Oh, I'm just feeling depressed that I have no talent in arousing you. Like, I just have Oh, uh, you know what? You're doing all right. You're I just met right. you. Like, I mean, I've known you for a long time. For, we've known each other from a distance. I, I just <laughs> yeah. got to say, as, as a man well, who's just... legally blind, your, your hair, the green, is working. Like, underneath the table is a flurry of activity. Oh. Yeah, so don't worry. You're doing fine. Well, that's working. Yeah, I like Maya's beard as well. I don't want him to feel left out. I'm, I'm aroused all around. I'm ready to do a big old this fucking whole, conversation. This whole series so far has been a uh, follow along as Maya grows his beard thing since I shaved right at the beginning of the year. And the, the so gray. this is yeah. There's kind of a beard, and so each episode that happens is getting a little bigger and bigger. Eventually, you just won't be able to see my face. I'm it seems like, like your beard in. was like it wasn't just a beard for beard's sake. It seems like your beard had a purpose, and now I understand it. Yeah, 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 it's just gonna get more square and and lower. You know, well, eventually we'll get to the point. I'm gonna do the. I think I'm gonna do the triple braid. You know. Oh Try man, to, don't do that. You know, make all those Game of Thrones put yeah. want to be pussies feel bad. No. Yeah, you know what? Don't do it. I well, mean, you don't like the Viking Viking look. I I would love the Viking look if you Viking everything else. Like, but well, if for, you, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, you you would. You you can't just Viking one part of you. Otherwise, you're gonna be a tragic hipster. That's why I shaved the fucking Viking. Remember my Viking mustache was like this big, and it was wonderful years ago. And then I realized that people were doing it ironically, and I was like, I just wanted to be a Viking, and and then I realized, nope, nope, nope. Portlandia is not just a fucking you know, episode it's funny anymore. Thinking about it, you would have made a pretty good White Walker for the uh, Game, of the Game of Thrones failed. There, yeah, but no, it was great right up to the end of season seven. I don't I see. I haven't seen. I have okay, not yeah, seen yeah. the last season. So yeah, don't don't. I'm it's like, you know, um, people told me when I had finished, because I finished off uh, the first four seasons of Sopranos, and so people were like, dude, don't even, don't even see season five. Don't even see season five. I saw season five, I was like, ah, oh, I just haven't seen season five. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it. But the the funny thing is that somehow, some way, and this might blow it up. Um, I have carefully guarded my my feeds and uh, the internet to not know what happened in Game of Thrones. I don't know who dies. How the fuck do you do that? Like, cause uh, without going into that, uh, you uh, uh, Walking Dead guy. I love The Walking Dead. Haven't seen that last season either. Okay, either. Well, yeah. so you. Uh, I'll just do spoilers, guys. Early right now. Uh, the whole thing when uh, Glenn got killed. Oh, I saw that. And all that where it's like, dude, they're like, oh, you saw the end season, right? Uh, the end of whatever. Oh yeah, season when he bashed his head in, yeah. Where right. you just see somebody gets hit, and that's it. And then they have, the, and I was waiting because I wanted to wait a couple uh, episodes in to watch it. And of course, dude, as soon as everybody, the very first day it's out there, there's all the pictures of Glenn with his face bashed in. Everybody yeah. posted everything. Right. Like, so see, I didn't get that yeah. luxury. So when, when we, we fuck, when we watched guys? the uh, ginger get plowed, and I was like, oh, are they changing the comic? Because the comic, Glenn gets killed. Yeah. But they killed the ginger. I'm like, oh, are they going to keep Glenn alive? Yeah. And they didn't. And I was like, you know what? Awesome. Like, like you kill this guy. Oh, guess what? We're killing another guy. Norman Reedus, you idiot. You shouldn't have said anything. Which is why I always say, control your emotions, kids. Because yeah. if Norman Reedus had controlled his emotions, Glenn would still be alive. Yeah. Norman Reedus. I heard there are a lot of Oh yeah, but well, they the most horrific way, so. Oh yeah, bash in the face a bunch uh -huh. over and over. Well, dude, I, I it, well, and uh, see, I'm one of those guys that I kind of like those graphic scenes like that. So I was uh, the way you know he gets hit, and he's sitting there, and eyeball, so he, yeah, oh, and he's trying to. Baby. I think you're trying to say something, but your head <laughs> bashed in. It's gross. <laughs> I love that shit. I, mean, I, I won't lie, dude. I I really did like Negan's character. The one I stopped liking him was as soon as he started turning into the nice guy after having been in jail for a bit. I'm just like, no, 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 dude. You can't be, you, you can't, yeah. you can't be the ultimate badass and then get salvation. See, like I, that. I do love when, when bad, like, I'm, I, I'm a super niche, uh, yeah, I'm supernatural guy. So like I've watched 14 seasons of that shit and like watching Crowley, the demon of hell, the king of hell, like who killed people with like snap of his fingers, like, and like see like evil guys suddenly become likable. I love that complexity. Um, I didn't watch the season yet. The last season I saw of Walking Dead, they slit his throat, and then Rick's like, we're going to save him, Coral. Uh, save him. Yeah, but yeah, Coral's dude. already dead, but he's a Coral. Yeah. So it sounds like Coral. Was, I didn't yeah. see anything after that. I was like, all right, this is going to suck because Maggie's pissed because Glenn's dead. I was like, 
This is going to be drama. I hate drama. I fucking hate even, drama. Even in your drama shows. I hate all drama. All right. I walk away in Chopped. Which when, is funny because the shit that you say at times is specifically to incite drama. And then you do the, uh, I can't see anything. I'm just walking away. Oh, yeah. No, no. I like, fucking I, love it, dude. It cracks me up to watch it, dude. I don't it, mind. You know, I don't give a fuck. So I'll sit there and let people and, and yeah. tell them I don't give a well, shit. Well, you're a braver man than I am. You've seen more combat than I have. But um, I... I haven't. I, I never had to go into combat. I, I personal, just visual. Uh, like, um, I am, like, literally when, when the judges of CHOP start critiquing someone and they, like, start getting lippy, like the contestant, I turn the channel. My wife hates it. I don't like confrontation. What I love is a little shit stirring because if you're the kind of person that if I say something and you get fired up, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Because why, everything why we hate so about emotional? other people. Yeah, it's like, guy, we're all just having a good time here. So I, I'm always like, what I do is I throw a little bomb and the people that react, I'm like, all right, well, you either need to get over your shit if I love you or if I don't like you. I'm like, well, now I know I'm never going to like you. Yeah. It's like, fuck off. Be calm. Everything we don't like about each other is stuff that we exist. So when I accuse somebody of being defensive, it's because I am radically defensive. If you call me out on the wrong thing, so I'm just like, let's see what happens here. Like, these it's are funny. It's, uh, it's you're similar in a way, but different than uh, remember Dave Basil. So and fucking Dave. Yeah, fucking people wa uh, watching this won't know, but it's the idea of the the type of person that you tell them that. Here's this person, here's who they are, and this is one of the things that irritates them, or here's something about them that, you know, is a, uh, is some, don't talk about this. And then Dave would be the type of guy who would go up and specifically point that out and poke at it and try to, uh, yeah. try to start or, you know. Oh, yeah, y young Dave would, would, would love to exasperate the problem because he was looking for a fight. Like, he got off on the fight. I don't want to have the fight. Mm. I'll have the fight. But I'm, I'm also, like, everyone's like, you avoid confrontation. I'm like, yeah, because the end result is not good. Like, I don't have the, uh, like, if you're if you're at a certain point, like, it's not going to go anywhere other than a probably physical violence or me telling you seven reasons why you should kill yourself. Yeah. Like, words are weapons as, as well as, as punching. Like, I don't want to do that. I just want us all to hang out well, and drink you also, You're smart in the way that you uh, kind of pick the battles and how you're going to fight them versus a lot of people just want to have that, oh, dude, I'm going to say what I want to say and I'm a, I, I'm that hidden badass that I'm going to say something and people are going to call me out and I'm going to pull out that hidden Hulk sort of thing. It's like, anybody who really thinks they're going to do that, it's like, all right, you've just yeah. never really been called out by anybody of merit. That's a deep, deep sadness that lives inside you where you're like looking to show, especially, like, I understand that as a small person. Like, I'm well, five, I'm not insinuating five. you're small or anything. No, like no, 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 I am short as fuck. Um, but like, I, I see that. I used to work security. Like, I'm, I'm a tiny little fella. I'm the height of an average woman. And... Is that true? Oh, yeah. Uh, I just have good posture. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, people don't realize that I'm not even 5'5". Five, five. I'm barely 5'5". Five, you, well, five. you, you do that thing where, uh, you know, like, kind of, I hate to be the chauvinist, but the manly thing where you kind of, like, you walk with your chest out a little bit, your shoulders back, the confidence thing. You have like, to. And also, not it's not the, uh... Well, you're going to have back problems if you do, if you, like, it's, it's healthy to be postured, and also, you don't realize how short you are. It's, it's a nice little guy to like have in the back burner confidence is so important but having confidence and then there's this little line it's like confident people who flout it are dicks confident people who just want to like hang out all i want to do is is have a barbecue hang out watch funny stuff talk about farts and laugh <laughs> if you're a fool i will say something but i don't want to i desperately don't want to i just want to have fun all I want to do in life is have fun. But you have a hard time when you see something stupid. You, you just want to point it out. I, I have to bite my tongue a lot. Um, I, I, and I have a, I have a, a beautiful menagerie of, of good friends, like great friends that I love. I have everything. I have, you know, I have militant right wingers and, and, and black and gay and lesbian and every single thing. I have like, Hipsters who are like, well, I'm I'm white and, and privileged, but I want to help stuff. I have fucking vegans. Ugh. I, don't, I, have I, all I, I, don't, I don't get that one. I don't get it. I get it. I get it because I I know all these people, and you know what the cool thing is? I say all that derogatorily, but they're the people that I reference are all brilliant people. 
that I love and don't fuck around. It's their friends. Their friends who have the same thing. So I have smart, like, I believe in hanging out with smart people who are my friends. That's what I like. And I don't care if it's book smarts. I don't care if it's anything like that. But if, if, if we can all coexist, you can do whatever the fuck you want. I have every single demographic in my friend group and I have their friends and their friends will pop off every now and then. I used to have this thing in parties at my house. It was, it was this like terrible epidemic that went around. Everyone would get drunk and it started to be like, who's the biggest victim? I think that's something that's permeating the culture right now in more of a, a mainstream way. But anyway, it's yeah. the story. That sounds like terrible so, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. It sounds like a metaphor for uh, culture right now. But anyway, continue. It, 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 this, would, this would happen. And <coughs> and sometimes my smart friends would get roped into it. Mm. And I would be sitting in the kitchen. I cook at parties. I stay in the kitchen. I can drink. People come into the kitchen. Like the kitchen's my, my safe space. Like the people I love come into the kitchen. People who don't know me very well won't because I'm holding razor sharp knives and I'm usually yelling things. Um, but I would listen to this stuff that happened toward the end of the evening, like understanding this culture, that culture, this culture, that culture. I'm like, I know some of these people, like they don't need to explain themselves. They're people. They're my friends. They're confident. And we we can all coexist. There's shit going on. that's wrong. But why are we doing this here at my house when we just ate really good food? And so the third time it happened and there was like dick measuring Metaphorically speaking, yeah. like, oh, you still understand what it's like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And finally, <laughs> anytime I anybody starts saying about, oh, you don't understand, it's like, it's like, okay, Jewish. If I'm going to be like, oh, you don't understand what it's like to be Jewish, who the fuck am I to say what it's like to be any other Jew other than me? Yeah. And maybe the ones I know in my immediate family, my immediate friends that I talk to, who are, and even then, I'm assuming that they're. But also, you, you, you've you grown up. You know, you've had your own life situation, but, I mean, you didn't grow up in Israel. Yeah. So, you also didn't grow up in 1939. So, like, I get that there's there's a thing. There's a thing there that I can never understand. But also, if you and I were to barbecue... You said it. That was 1939. Yeah. I Do don't we get all wanna... this stuff holding on to shit from the past. But anyway. I, I, I get that, but, like... like Let's things... think about the awesome barbecue last week or whatever. Exactly. So we're, we're all having good food, and then people get drunk, and they're sitting in the corner and like talking about this. And I was like, I, I feed off negative energy. I don't like it. I want everyone to be happy. So after the third time, I walked out. I was like, hey! Since we're all measuring cocks here, and they're like, mm -hmm. I'm like no, no. It seems like everyone's having a hard time with stuff. I get it. I had, my, I had no, it was, it was here. <laughs> yeah. I was like, every day I wake up, and the center of our solar system is actively trying to murder me. Every single day, if I don't slather two kinds of sunscreen, I walked here in a little bit of sun, and I'm pinker than I was before I left MI, the school I work at. The sun is fucking <laughs> trying true. to kill me. So I'm just it's wondering. because I worship the sun. That's my, that's my god. George Carlin have, said it. And Joe, that's Joe what I got. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I wish I could too. Unfortunately, I fucking hate it. Well, here, I'll make you feel a little bit better. Theoretically, it's actually trying to kill all of us. It's this huge explosion that's trying to happen and kill the whole thing. It's only the weight of itself is the only thing that keeps it from happening because it keeps falling in upon itself. And see, this is a, a good point. So it's trying right. to kill all of us in a much more realistic way. Semantically speaking, you have actually proved a really good point. Unfortunately, semantics work the other way. So everyone else is sad about the things that kind of hurt. Whereas I wake up. Yeah, I know the sun's all killing us, but guess what? But you actually have to you have to battle it every day and in a very real it, way. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if everybody else does this, but when I wake up, I do this. Fuck! Because I have to slather on a bunch of sunscreen. Human versus soul. Yeah. The eternal battle. I, I have a fucking hat. Like, eternal you know, battle like, wage. I've long. made hats my my freaking like part of my, my repertoire right. and I love them, but like I have to. Yeah. So it's like I, I said that. I was like, the sun. So if we could have the next party of us just eating barbecue and enjoying our lives together, not be about measuring sadness and instead enjoying each other, I would love it. And that was the last party that we had dick measuring for uh, for for sadness. And the cool thing about my friends is we all fall into it, especially with whatever the climate is and blah, blah, blah. It's like, guys, it all sucks. It sucks for everybody one way or another. But if we focus on it, negativity breeds negativity. Like, let's just be fucking happy. Yeah. 
Like, well, put on a goddamn hat and wear an umbrella. too, because uh, especially in the fact that, you know, as we get older, uh, the group of friends tends to get smaller. It's harder to get people into it, right? And and But it tends to be a group, and then there's that, what they refer to as the echo chamber, right? So if the thing that's going around is a negative thing, and that's what's bouncing between all people, it's really hard to get positive because you don't have a whole bunch of outside influence injecting positivity into it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You ha- so that's why we have to be on our friends because it's easy, especially for, for socially active people with good intentions, that's so great. And make sure that they're doing, like people who like care. My wife does charity and helps stuff and I don't know, like I don't pay attention to it. I throw money at things and I don't tell anybody I do it that I believe in. I don't want any part of it, but she's actively involved in stuff. Like, you know, that's great. But the thing is, when it's time for a meet and greet with our friends, let's not talk about the negative stuff. Let's just, like, like, if you're working hard, like, I hate when people talk about work all day, every day. That's why I like hanging out at the bar with with the right kind of people, you know, after work. It's like, eh, lesson sucked. It was a hard day. Let's talk about farts. Yeah. Like, it's so much better when you focus on positivity because we've already done the work. You know, if you're a teacher, you're a teacher. You help people. I'm a teacher. We all do different things. Like, people do charity work. Great. But when you're done with that work, why do we need to bring it up? At a certain point, that's our inner narcissism. The same reason that we talk about our bad days. Why do we want people to know about our bad days? Well, it's, it's funny you bring that up because that's a, I'd, I'd be interested to hear your guys' opinions on this, if any. Um, one thing that I find interesting, and I'm kind of not sure where I fall with it. You see this thing on Facebook where somebody's like, hey, my XYZ family member is going through ABC. Things aren't good. It's really bad. You can use all the prayers. And then there's this big, long thing about it. And so there's part of it that's like, all right, man, I feel... So I feel bad for this person. I'm going through it and all that. And then I'm like, there's a part of me that's also like, man, now all of these people reading it are feeling bad. And it's like, yeah, I get that these people want to feel better. I've, I've never done that. And I've gone through some serious losses in my life. I've never really done that whole thing. And I don't mean anything against people that do it. But I do think it's a weird sort of, you know, oh, my mom has stage four terminal yeah, cancer. Really and either, it's personally. horrible. Uh, give me prayers and all that, and then you know, then there's 26,000 messages underneath. Yeah. I it's think like, that these people are different than us, maybe like they need that well, kind sure. of support. Sure. You know, like I personally don't do it because I don't want that kind of attention. Yeah. About my, I, I just want to process it on my own and my close people. This but, is the this is the hard thing because like there are people out there that genuinely believe that their Facebook friends are their friends. That's, and, I think, more along and if the that's, lines and, of the issue, and, they, yeah. and there's, like, probably of the 26,000 people, there might be fifteen to 20,000 people that care. And fuck our cynical asses for stopping that. The problem is that anything good gets abused. And when you start seeing, like, somebody's like, my, my mom has stage 4 breast cancer, could use some prayers. They care. Then it's... I woke up today and my boyfriend called me fat. Yeah. And I could use all your support. And that's where I woke up today and it's like, you know, like my ex girlfriend got married. So it's like now I'm going to get a real sex doll and bang stuff, which has actually happened in my life. My wife's ex boyfriend <laughs> got a sex doll that looked like her. And um, uh, God bless him. I'm that's fine. I, I, I'm not <laughs> jealous by any means because I think it's great. But, like, what are you doing posting certain things? Like, reaching out for support in a, in a legitimate way is good, but unfortunately we can't police morality. We, can't, we can also can't police social fucking constructs. So we have to deal with these assholes, which is why I've gone on a, I will not, I, I block things, I stop things, I don't do politics, I don't yeah, do I this. I started cl- closing down. Just close it. Well, a while ago I'd done that thing where I posted, I said, any political things, no offense, but I'm going to block you yeah. here if you're really my have, friend. Have you ever you noticed that like, like when you see the long form like bullshit, whether it's political or sad, and you don't know the person very well, if you just block how much better you feel? Because there's a guilt that people have. The reason they get right, 20 Right guns, immediately. But then the reality is that after the guilt of the blocking, you never deal with any of that shit yeah. again. 
And that's the thing. It's so like the, the, the positivity of blocking negative energy. If you care about the person that's posting this stuff, whether they're, whether they're an attention whore or not, if you care about them, cool. But I've found that like ignoring or blocking or doing all this other stuff, whatever your like online, you know, ability is, it's so much better. Like I just stop. I don't want to deal with it. Like I love you or I don't know you. That, those are the two things. So if I don't fucking know you, block. I don't give a fuck what's happening in your life. Don't post a fucking five paragraph thing on my page. I don't know you. Now I have fans, and so if they personally message me, like I started, I've started like a couple different like charity things for people yeah. that I don't know because they're fans and they, they say, hey, would you really do that? And I look at it, I'm like, so yes. Put your name on it. Sort Absolutely. Of thing. Yeah, yeah. I would love to do that. Like I'm fine with that because that's, that's proactive. They want to make something happen. But if it's just pissing and moaning, I have no interest in that. I barely have interest in, in my like close personal friends. I tell my wife, honey, I will take out the garbage. I will do the dishes. I will cook you food. I will have sex with you. If you want somebody to like talk about your day, get a friend. Because I'm not that guy. And she loves me for that. I that's don't know how to fucking that's, do that's that. That's probably why I'm single now. Because if I could meet somebody that could be like that, I'd probably be married. Oh, absolutely. I, I was, I'm the luckiest man in the world because Sounds like I don't have the emotional capability to say, I cannot validate your emotions. I can't. Like, I'm not the kind of guy, and, and Hacksaw, who has been on the show, was, no. to, like, like, you need to just say, I understand, that's so horrible. I'm like, no, I don't understand. I'm not in your shoes. I would have done something totally different. Or, what can I, who can I hit? Yeah. What can I build? What can I move to make you feel better? I can't fix you, and I don't care about like sitting here and dwelling with you, but I can make you dinner. And my wife has figured that out, and we have a really wonderful relationship because of that. So get a friend. Have a sensitive friend. Hug and cry all you want. It's not happening over here. You're a lucky man. I'm the luckiest man on earth. There you go. Fuck yeah. I mean, we can't really be each other's therapists for I mean, just somebody being there and actually doing the active service is actually probably more valuable than just, oh, honey, I hear you, you know. It's, I mean, anyone can really say that, but what are you actually doing for me? Anyone can hear each other. That's the thing. It's like, that's why I don't care about it. It's like, yes, you could, I could say, I'm sad. Like, I hear you and I understand. Fuck, what's that do? But yeah. if you bought me a beer or a sandwich, I would be better. Like, <laughs> And so I get that completely, like, some people need that, and that's fine. That's not me, and that's not how I operate. And so if I did that, my wife asked me to be honest about nine years ago. And I said, you don't want me to be. And she said, yes, I do. I said, no, you don't. And she said, yes, I did. And after some trial and error, she knows now. I'm sad. I'm like, what can I do? Listen, nope. If, if I can't fix it, you're just going to drag me down in your bullshit, so uh, I'm going to go make some food. I'll put away your laundry. I can do these things, but like I can't. I'm not a therapist. I'm a. I, if I were a therapist, there'd be more suicides, which actually <laughs> makes me think I should be a therapist. Dude, you know the po world needs some better population control. I have some thoughts on that. You know, so do I. But those, that's another podcast yeah. entirely, and not not well, this one. Really, uh, I, I like that because a lot of times in a couple setting, that we think that emotional validation is the most important. And that's like really valued. I, I understand that some people need more of that. Like there's the, this thing called, have you ever heard of this love language thing? Like uh, yep, 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 yep. I don't know about this. What, yeah, wait, yeah. what? Love language, explain, it's great. Is it, is it gonna help I'm, me? Wait, is this gonna help me? Oh, with... I'm not gonna explain it. If you wanna know, you can just Google it. Okay. But basically, there are people who want different things from you, okay? So, Casey is an active service guy. He, he That's how he shows love, right? But people, some people want words of affirmation like you know no. you're great you're so beautiful you're so amazing yeah they want that on daily basis. constantly yeah. love languages and and my wife is is a, a a word person she words have power she's incredibly sec successful like a life coach she does stuff she helps people and so she wants that and i try but she knows that i can't do it great and we've always and and she was the one who said love language like the, when you said that, i was like oh that's great but she knows when I take out the trash and I cook the food and I do the things I do, that I'm saying I love you. 
And every now and then, if I remember, I'll give her a little hug and I'll be like, I love you, lady. This is like your guys' <laughs> version of uh, Princess Bride. As you wish. I, when, I, when I do the dishes, when I, when I tuck her really in the bed, saying, yeah, I, I tuck you. her in every single <laughs> night. Every single night, no matter what I'm doing, if I'm there, like I tuck her in. Like I do that. Like it seems senseless to me because you can do it yourself in my robot mind, but she loves it and I love, and now I love doing it. I can really get this because literally every morning for the last 25 years, I've gotten up and made my bed every single morning. Two reasons. One, one is I, that means, <laughs> no matter what, at the start of every day, I've got at least one thing done. But more, that's how I let my bed know how much I love it. <laughs> it's 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 a hundred percent true. These little things, like like, my wife is is so brilliant at so many things, yeah, but she she's will. not good at cleaning up. So I make the bed, and she's like, "Yay!" And I'm like, "You know, one day you could." She's like, nah. And I'm like, now it's unfortunately a beautiful little romantic game we have. So she doesn't make the bed. I make the bed, or I put away the things, and and that's cool because she's more successful, smarter, and better than me. So I can't like you know punch her or anything. You're not allowed. No, I love no, her to death, but I'm like, like, I'd be like, don't not rinse your dish. I can't because she might not rinse her glass, but she has literally kept me from killing myself. So it's, it's a balance. Love language is a beautiful thing. And it's, it's funny and stupid. I'm an action guy. So if my wife ever dies, if you ever want to hook up, I will do the laundry. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Yeah. Oh, man. It's, I can't really I'm just saying, they, people explode all the time. And I love my wife, but if she dies, I just want to make sure you know that I'm on the market. Mm, okay. If she dies. I could do some next pack of service guy in my life. <laughs> no. no, no. Uh, the laundry. <laughs> the fucking yeah. champ. Yeah, I, I was, uh, you know, uh, was I was a professional 110 chef. 110% of the yeah. recommended yeah. dose. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and the professional chef thing is easy. That's why, like, being... Under five foot five is not a big deal when you're a professional chef. Oh, so since since you mentioned it, so you uh, we hung out for a while before the podcast started. We're talking. One of the things you talked about was uh, something about allergies and people who bullshit allergies. We're talking about that because I'm so uh, I don't think a lot of people know, but I have a allergy to onion, garlic, bullshit. wheat, and chives. Yeah. So one where you know I, I start to sweat. There's a I, specific thing that's called something. I can't remember what it's called. Um, there's actually a legitimate allergy to, yeah, I, to I, that. I should know the name of it too, and I can't remember. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that kind of stuff. Um, the, the, those bulbs like fuck you up. Yeah. And yeah. that's, so you don't like, you don't so like So it's garlic. even bad. Like I can't be in, so, um, like a fresh onion, like in my dad's place, they would slice it. He had like super powered kitchen fans that would suck it out. And still, uh, a lot of times I would have to leave. Go to the other side of the house. Yeah, because it was it was so strong of a mess with me. That's a legitimate thing. It's sad. Yeah, it's it sad. sucks. But but it's the way that uh, actually it's funny because there's a little story. Uh, Greg Harrison and Justin Apurgis, uh, they had met each other, but really started hanging out because I was hanging out with Justin and I had called Greg and Greg's like, dude, I just made a whole bunch of chili. He said I made a bunch for you without onions in it. So when they were living out at the house, him, Matt Williams, Shannon Busy, all those guys. Yep. So I was like, well, I got my buddy Justin with me. He's like, dude, bring him with me. So he goes out and turns out, you know, Greg had made all this without any onions and stuff. And Justin has the same allergy as me. Greg had made way too much for me to eat, but it happened to be just the right amount for Justin and I to eat. So we hung out. Everybody's chilling out at the, that old house out there. And now that's how those guys started hanging out. Chili without onions. Yeah, weird, right? I'm trying to, like, find the, the flavor there, but... Was it good? More, yeah, more peppers and spices and stuff like Pe that. So peppers is all good. Is, so I, don't I wouldn't miss any Yeah, yeah, I can do peppers okay. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of eating raw pepper like that. Yeah, but mm -hmm. cooked into stuff, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm, I, I love hot. Greg and I used to do a uh, hot sauce challenge. Uh, Mark Thomas with Mark Thomas. That's how it started. With oh, yeah. Mark Thomas in the library at MI. I remember that. Like, it was funny. Like, I never got to play with you guys on that. And the fact of the matter mm -hmm. is, like, I have all the hottest sauces in the world that I eat every day. Yeah. Well, it, uh, it finally ended when uh, one day Greg and I were at the same house. Um, and Dave, did you see Greg's? He had that bottle of Dave's uh, private. Insanity. Yeah, Dave's Insanity private, the private reserve. reserve. 
and that came in the little box, wood box and all that. Yeah. So he had this idea one day. It's like, because, you know, there, there's the stuff that congeals and solidifies around the edge. So he takes a, two toothpicks and scoops one around this, the whole half of that, the other one around that. So we sat in his kitchen and, and each of us, and fuck, dude, like I was sitting at his kitchen table and I could not, it was like just trying to get a breath of air in. I, I literally thought I was going to die. You're fucked on that. And buddy. Greg was doing the same thing. He had like gone onto the floor and went from the kitchen into the laundry room and he's just in the laundry room. I couldn't see him. I'm like, and I wanted to be like, dude, are you okay? But I literally could not say or do anything but try to breathe. Yeah. We'll have, to, uh, we'll have to do a hot sauce challenge on this next time. Uh, dude, what we'll have to do is wait till Greg's out here and, uh, you know. Yeah, because, like, I have I have that The best thing to do would be to do that uh, sometime when Nam's happening. So, like, Mark Thomas is out here and some oh, yeah. of the guys are out. I'm in Nashville now. I have a house out there. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to be playing with him in a bit. He's actually going to be sure. uh, recording on uh, some oh, stuff. That's funny. I, I thought about actually getting a house out there, but I realized I probably wouldn't go out enough to – so I couldn't live there. It's actually really good now. It's a lot mm -hmm. different. Yeah. Yeah, the, in all fairness, though, because I lived there, what, it was 2000, end of 2006, in the beginning of 2007. That's when I was touring out there, and I would never have thought that I was going to do it now that I'm, like, working out there half the time. The other thing is, too, I was I was touring with the Vandals at the time, and so there, there was very little downtime that I really got to see Nashville, and I didn't have a car. So what I got to see was limited to where I went with everybody else. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that, and, and especially at that time, that's not going to be good. Yeah. Um, no, things have changed. Nashville's great. Um but yeah, we got to get the boys out here because like I like now Mark's a father. All I want to do is make him eat hot sauce and die. I, I want to kill him. Right. I love him to death, but I just want to kill him with hot sauce. You like spicy, right? Yeah. Where are you from again? Korea. You like the spicy. Yeah, but right. there's a difference between the spicy and the hot because we're talking about moving on spicy. We're talking, you know, into the four hundred thousand plus scobles and some of this stuff into the what. Like two to six million, they're getting now. When you're getting into extracts, that's stupid. Like that's at that point, you're losing flavor. But like, there's there's chilies in Korea that have like you know 150, 200,000 Scoville you, you know, those are great. Like you know, habanero hot is good. But when you're starting to go like in the million, million plus, like like I eat Carolina Reapers, I'll I'll cut them in little slivers and put them in my salad for fun. Mm -hmm. But that's like million, million and a half. When you get be beyond that. Well, there's stuff like the days where it's like, oh, yeah, add three drops of this to your vat of chili. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be like. Yeah. Now that, and the thing is, though, like. Three drops. Like the what? Dave's Insanity stuff, like the reserve extracts are one thing, but any of the sauce, you can dump that in there. That That's a lie. Like kids, eat spicy stuff. Don't don't ask questions. I probably wouldn't recommend it with that, that private reserve. No, no, that don't do was, anything. I think don't, that was the. Two anything million? that costs like 40, anything over a million and a half, anything that's over 40 bucks, don't do. Yeah. But like get yourself some Dave's Insanity sauce, put it on a chip, have some fun, live a little. For it's going to hurt your butt. Left. Yeah. I mean, oh, we, dude. Yeah, that's always the best part, dude, is the, uh, dealing with the aftermath. I've done every drug yeah, known to man. I've done every single thing, and I've never once h hugged the toilet and begged God for forgiveness. But I have eaten some spicy. I used to, uh, Chicago Dan. Yeah. Um, I used to go to his house, and he always had Blair's uh, insanity sauce for me because he knows I like the spicy. Yeah, and that's like Dave's like scorpion, like double insanity. Like that's that's hot. Like that's like yeah. a million. It's to the point where you can have it. Some people dab won't it, but, appreciate it. Yeah, that's but. for that's for the extremes, but that's not stupid. So the idea, and he also got to talk it's, about it's the kind of stuff that you could mess with somebody, but not have to worry about exactly. Them. So he would bring that to me. And I had it, and so we'd stay over. I'd stay over at his house, and we'd watch TV, and he'd go to bed early. And I would always finish my night, because I was young and I could do it, with a quesadilla. And I would have Taco Bell sauce and Blair's. So I would dab the Blair's and drizzle the Taco Bell sauce. Unfortunately, when you're drunk... Sometimes you can mix the two up! <laughs> I drizzled the Blair's, and I dabbed the Taco Bell sauce. I was in his Talks bathroom. To my buddy with his canteens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Whoopsies. Yeah. Yeah. I would rather drink piss than what I did to myself. Like, like I, I was on the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would like to <laughs> not have either of so those I was like, two. Ah! And I was like, I was like, if you get me through this, if you get me through this, I remember asking God to like validate my existence, and like I would not do it again. I did it twice, which means I am a bad servant. 
Um, well, I'm a liar. Me twice. Yeah, I, mean, I did it twice, and I still haven't learned my lesson. But that's the only time I've ever, ever asked God to help me out with chemicals. Never drugs, never alcohol. But the hot sauce, the, my spokes were aflame. <laughs> if you uh, had any interesting experiences with hot sauce? No, I don't. No? No. Oh, I, I just didn't challenge myself. Are you either. smart? Okay, I was going to say, are you, were you smart or just I mean, didn't? for an Asian person, I'm not that good with spice. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not the most atypical Korean that I, I have known. I'm the only Asian that I know that's not very good at math. You're not good at math? Are you trying I mean, to get into Harvard? Better than most average Americans. I, I assume that, yeah. But sometimes... That's I not saying a whole lot. Hmm? So you're not saying all I wonder, that. like, I wonder, like, like basic multiplication, like, uh, throw out a multiplication table. Um, I don't, I don't have one here. Oh, I'll give you an easy one. Yeah, nine so, times nine, buddy. No, I'm, I was gonna do a challenge with her oh, to okay. see who's better, me or her. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, yeah. my level is. Well, I want to know if I'm better than an Asian. See, <laughs> you said you were the worst, but like, I that would feel better. Never mind, it's not gonna work. And math no. is the we was the only subject in Korea that I needed a tutor. I actually needed a tutor in math as well. I had a special class for math. Like, I graduated a year early. I was doing great. Math sucks. I'm not great at math. Yeah, but I, I wanted to win for something. I don't know why I challenged you. I'm sorry for yelling. But they say music is me uh, math, right? I mean, it's partial. It, it is. is uh, no, it, it is in so many levels when it really breaks it down. But Yeah, when you break it down. But the same thing, cooking is math. I'm a cook. Like, you know, it's like, it's, like, I can do, bait. like, if somebody says, what's this times this, or, like, you know, if there's half a cup for this many cups, like, I can relate that. But once you get into, like, <coughs> fractions or geometry or trigonometry, yeah. I'm like, fuck off and well, die. The funny thing is, though, is I tend to notice this, and uh, I don't know if this is just me. I'm sure it's not what. Or I should say if this is their select people or if this is the majority of people. But I tend to find that math really comes down to what can you associate it to? Because if you're just learning, like we go and learn algebra, A, find A, find B, X plus Z equals, you know, yeah. well, it means nothing. But as soon as you equate it to something, okay, well, I have, you know, six drums and there are these different sizes and they have to fit in the back of this van, blah, 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 that's this much cubic space. All of a sudden, like, I'm able to do math because it matters to me, yeah. you know, where I... It didn't before. And I think a lot of people tend to be that way where it's like you suddenly care about something and become a lot better at something you weren't good at when you have a need or a want in the moment for that specific uh, formula. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Spatial you know, relations. A lot of it is we, we don't even understand the formulas. We just realize that we were coming up with a formula to figure something out. Oh, yeah. And it happens to be math, but we don't think of it as math. So that makes it's funny how much more painless math is when you're not thinking of it as math. Yep. Yeah, well, that's what separates the nerds from the uh, the tradesmen. Like, yeah. like, I can do math all day when I need to yeah. for, like, you know, menus, this and that, like, you know, ratios of food. But if you ask me a, a question about math, I'm going to fall down. Yeah. It's just, oh, I have this equation. Yeah. I need you to solve it. I'm like, nope, yeah. nope, but I can punch you, so run away, nerd. So yeah, like that's that's amazing. Like spatial relations and stuff like that is is. I mean, we've had to load a many a van in our time. We have this many things that need to go in this amount of space. What do we do? Greg and I talked about doing an app called Rock Roadie that would basically be you know the first level is you have like a Prius and you have a tiny amount of equipment you got to sh shove in you know and all that. If you fit that in, you go you get to the point where you're actually like you know playing arenas and you have like five trucks that you have to load all this stuff in, but like oh, yeah. a 3D spatial thing like that. It's, it's uh, not a bad thing. I mean, my wife drives a Prius, and uh, I don't drive, so I've gotten a lot of gear in there. Prius is amazingly spacious. But it, it, here's the thing. Depending on how you use it. But that's right? true. A, a moron's not... Well, that's the thing. Like, you can give a moron a fucking half, half of a truck, and he's going to fuck up. Like, morons should be executed. Like, that's just the way it is. But give me a Prius, I'll put half a band in there. But I'm not a moron. <laughs> is it okay to say to kill morons? I don't know. I mean, um, uh, politically correct, I don't think so. I mean, let's do it. But uh, what I guess it really first we'd have to define moron. So that if that goes down this whole thing, if as long as we don't define moron, I guess it's fine for you to say it. You know, because you're not actually discriminating against somebody. Let's look up the definition of moron. All right. Well, then, then you might fuck up this podcast. But okay. Oh come on! Go what do we find? Go ahead. 
No, actually, my phone's off. It's funny. Right I, I, I just start thinking about moron bros by no effects. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the moron is an old school like term. I'm sure it's not allowed you're to be used. You're moron. Now, yeah. So I don't want to kill the handicap by any means. I'm just saying if you're a functioning well, member of society that fails, you should be killed. Since I know this, you'd be demonetized. Anyway, I guess you can't call people retarded anymore. No, certainly not. Which, which is crazy because here's the thing. I mean, I, it's a word that means slow. When I really think about it, it's kind of like one of the nicer ways that you can uh, refer to somebody like that. Yeah. It's yeah. like I, I actually thought the original reason why they called started calling it retarded was to actually be sensitive. That it's, was, yeah. That's how, that's how overly sensitive we've become now, is that we're now taking the words that were meant for sensitivity and saying these are fucking not sensitive enough yeah. and you're oppressing people yeah. who are actually retarded and can't not understand what you're saying anyway. Yeah. Have you ever actually uh, been in a class, you're a music teacher, and I have had this happen, and fortunately, the uh, touched person that was in the class was awesome. And as I said, we're going to the retard. Everyone in the class breathed in deep. I was like, I didn't think of a thing. And I did it again. We go to the retard here. Like, we're slowing down. The retard is the slowdown. That's the musical term. And the, the touched person, I think that's what you say now, um, was like, it's fine. And everyone's like, oh. I was like, yeah, guys, I don't understand what the fucking big deal was, yeah. and we I'm all not laughed. I'm saying retard, I'm saying retard, you yeah. dicks. Yeah, also, yeah, I, I made sure, I was like, retard, you know. It's and, and, yeah, and I was like, <laughs> what I wanted to do was like, see, even the retard gets it. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. But I didn't, because, but the thing is, that gentleman would have high-fived me, because the, the pressure that he was under with that deep breath bullshit. Yeah, he feels real, just as much, probably more pressure than you, yeah. it's like such a weird, it's just me. It's creating weird tension for no reason. Yeah, we should all just be gentle. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've had a couple trans uh, students you know, in, in a mind. world where we want everybody to be open and accepting of one another, and then yet everybody holds that oh, like like they're different. It's like, well, no. If we all want to be equal, then you got to treat everybody like they're equal. People got to say stuff, and you got to just treat it like it's stuff. Oh yeah. Well, equal is a, is a totally different thing because if you want me to treat you equally, I'm going to make fun of you, all of you, really hard. It's going to be bad. You don't want to be treated equally. You want to be treated fairly. Well, that's how most people tend yeah. to be, right? Fair is fine. I can work on that. But, like, not every human's going to be fair. We need to work on fairness, not equality. Because equality is silly because everyone thinks equality is a different thing. You know, that that's that's stupid. I mean, we had... Well, it, it has to be the de debate about equality of opportunity versus the equality uh, of outcome, right? Yeah. The equality of outcome is just a stupid, 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 stupid... I can keep going. But, Idea. Yeah. Let's just the be. The quality let's just be of opportunity, I think, is a good idea to shoot for. Yeah. You know, and it's not like cause the world's a crazy, chaotic place, as we know. You very well know. We're never going to be able to get there, but it's the idea to strive for that and shoot for it as much as possible. Is how. If I can sit down at a table with a bunch of people, and not feel awkward, and you not feel awkward, we're all doing something. If we can all do that in a bigger situation. If we can start going around and doing that in a bigger situation, like we have to fight for, for like in the Ukraine, people are going to fucking pray the gay away camps, concentration camps. Somebody needs to do something there. I don't know what I can do because I'm not allowed to be in the army because I am legally blind and no one will let me kill anything. My, I tried, I tried, I tried so hard. I'm too old to go back in. Technically. I am too out of shape to go back into the military now. Dude, all right. No, that's not commando true. unit, you and me. Like, yeah. people in Africa are murdering albinos for magic. Like, we could fix these things if we were allowed. But since we can't, let's just raise awareness without being dicks. We can't go to the Ukraine and, and rescue the, uh, the gays in the concentration camp. But what we can do is not yell at the poor... 80-year-old white guy that didn't know saying something is gay is wrong. Yeah. Like, that guy probably didn't have anything against gay people. He's like, oh, man, I'm sorry. I was like, hey, buddy. My friend's gay. He's like, oh, he's cool as shit. I'm just saying that was gay. Not like, that wasn't gay like two men butt-fucking and loving each other, which I'm fine with. I'm just saying that was gay because it was, you know, Adani and Marie. And let that guy do that because he's yeah. 80. Yeah. We have a responsibility to change our nomenclature and work on that. 
But we have well, to have balance. That tends to be one of those two, and I'll be the first person to say it, and I'll, I'll put on. Like, I grew up, you know, I'm a 43 year old man. I grew up as a kid, everybody's running out on the, play, the uh, playground, you know. But, oh man, that's fucking gay. And nobody ever meant it as, oh my God, that's a horrible, like, a, a, a person that wants to, you know, a, a man that wants a dick or a woman that wants to eat pussy. It's, it's never was the idea behind it, and it's never been. Yeah. It's just, it, it was just one of those things that was said, and it was like, it wasn't meant against, in a derogatory way against these people. Yeah. It was just a, a, a turn of a phrase. Yeah. And it's like, it's, so it's difficult now, because I still catch myself saying, fuck, that's gay. Well... I'm not obviously when I say fuck, I could be playing a video game yeah. and get killed by an MP, uh, you know, a virtual gay. thing. Yeah. Fuck, that's so gay. But I don't, I'm not, but I don't understand the why is that gay? It's be, you're just saying it's that, it's right? the nomenclature, like well, it's, it's, it's that's, that's, that's the way it was. Yeah. yeah, well, it's the same thing. Like, okay, I can say that's so fucking lame. Yeah, that's what I was saying when I mean, we were, I but that's that. how yeah. it's it, and it's just. But that's, but that's what most people, people who have a limb could that. be offended by. Like, imagine this. That's so lame. If you have a limp. Yeah, I mean, like, that's offensive to people. Yeah, like, well, that's where we're at with words now. Every word you use yeah. is offensive to somebody. I have a feeling that lame is probably not cool to use. Now, I live, one of my best friends in the world is my roommate. Me and my wife, we have a place, and the only person allowed to touch my hair is my friend Paul. He's a piano player. He's amazing. He's also an amazing hairdresser, stylist. I don't know what, you know. Gay is the French flag. I don't know if you're allowed to say that. Yeah. And so I always like when I'm like, that's so fucking gay. And he's there. I'm like, not gay like you and the love you have for another man, but gay like I don't like it. And we laugh and stuff like that. But like he's been there. Like, but it's well, my that, responsibility. That's, chronic, that's that's pretty much a good way of saying that's what like when I use it. That's kind of that's the terminology. Yeah, that's the meaning behind it. It's, like, it's a it's, it's a gay joke. Like I don't like something. Yeah, not, you know, it's and, a joke between so, me and him. Because we can do that. But the thing is, now, unfortunately, and I didn't know you were 43 because you look so young and sexy. <laughs> um, like, we're we're in this age bracket where we have, unfortunately, to knock it off when it's right to knock it off. But at the same time, in this beautiful podcast, let people know if you're a person that comes down on somebody who says something's gay and you know that person is not being a hate-filled, want to pray the gay away, kill all homosexuals, what are you doing? You're not helping. No. Like, educate, say, hey, man, you know, I'm going to do that at home. Like, you can do that if you want. But, like, let's let's not... we The people who... The, the intellectual terrorists that we have now on the other side, like, love, if, if, if love is literally the answer to everything, which everybody seems to agree on, um, then you're not going to fix the hard right. You're not going to fix racists by saying, anyone who's racist should be killed. Kill yourself. No. Your mom and dad probably taught you wrong. Let me, let me, let me teach you. Let me show you that uh, everyone's equally stupid. That's, we're all so stupid, racist. Well, it's, it's funny because you, you bring that up. You talk about you know, the, this, uh, the hard, this hard right, the far right. It's like the alt-right, the neo-Nazis and stuff. But then all this stuff that's happening on the, the extreme opposite side, this far left, and how they're pushing for segregation. Oh, well, if you're a, a white, the, like the old white patriarch, you're like, well, what kind of fucking racist assumption is that? You don't know. This people could have had parents who have been fighting against slavery, fighting for reparations, fighting for all this the whole time. Who the fuck are you to say anything about these people? Some of these white people, they might be first generation over here in the States. Maybe their parents came up. Who the fuck? Like, it's the pendulum, unbelievable. The pendulum swings this yeah. way and this way. Yeah. And the problem well, luckily, is... Most of the, pe most of the people are in the middle here and just saying, what the fuck are you The problem saying? is the loud people are pulling one way or the other. You yeah, have yeah, your yeah. alt right and your alt left. Do and you really think that most people are in the middle and thinking, what the hell is going on? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, 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 I do. Because uh, here's the thing. I think most people don't give a shit. I think, because um, here's what happens. This is my thought. And it's a lot more complex this but in a nutshell, uh, the different uh, media outlets, whether they're right or left, they push these certain narratives, right? And they push it for so long, and either it holds weight or it doesn't. And so what happens is people see that it's bullshit, so they go back and, all right, they blow it off. Or there's the people that get caught up in it, and they become the fringe groups over there. 
I mean, because of people who are on the very extreme side, they have the loudest voice, and they well, that, really well, that's push where the most cares. extreme, you know, stance. And you know, the news cares about sensational stuff. So it's I think it's the media's responsibility to push. They're giving these people power more than they should have. June and has I, a very good point. Well, that's exactly no. That's that's exactly the point. And uh, here's the thing: like, the, what I want to say to these people who are always like being offended by every word that's being said. I'm not somebody that, it's just not in my character. Like if you want to be called a certain pronoun or whatever, and that's important to you, I'll do it because that's important to you. I'm, I have no problem with that. I don't need to troll you. I don't need to trigger you. I'll just respect that for whatever reason that you're doing that. I respect that, right? I'll have my opinion when I'm not around you, but when I'm around you, I'll respect that. Just, that's just what I do. But at the same time, I also think that if you're going to be offended by everything that's being said in this world, you're giving your power away to these people. <laughs> and see. you're just in this infinite loop of victimization that is going to completely disempower you. And you're just, well, these people are thinking that that's some kind of empowerment because if they are like controlling well, what, right? uh, well, I think what happens, not. June, I think you're exactly right. What happens is I think these people go on the internet, right? And they voice the exact opinions that you're talking about. And what happens is other people who believe the same things, have the same uh, interactions or same views, then start writing them. And other people get in. And then, again, we brought this, we talked about the echo chamber. And then these people, and then all of a sudden it's in their mind that the whole world is this way. Because everybody I'm talking to feels the same thing. It's like, you guys keep telling the same story back and forth. Of course it's going to seem like that. Yeah. And, uh. And yeah, and then because, and like we said about the, the majority being in the middle, yeah, because I think, you know, the extreme voices are where the entertainment's at, that's where the news goes. So People check it out for a little bit, realize it's insane extremism, so they just kind of go back to the thing, because they figure it's going to fall off before too long. So is it our responsibility for the people who are falling into the middle, is it our time to speak up and actually do something? I think that it's so. the The biggest example I had was when I was doing a, a B market tour in the U.S. I was in, I it could have been Alabama, it could have been Mississippi, which means I'm a fucking West Coast douchebag. I don't remember, but I was in a diner in the morning, and I was just by myself. And I woke up early. The drugs had worn off. It wasn't Waffle House, was it? Um, it <laughs> was akin. To okay. Waffle House, but it, see, we were in such a place that Waffle House wasn't there. Okay. So I'm sitting there, and I have great hearing because I don't see very well. Um, so I can hear a lot of stuff. I'm an eavesdropper on accident, and I listened to two truckers, giant burly men, flannel over. One of them, at least, was in overalls, and I remember them going like, talking about the issues in the most eloquent way I've ever fucking heard. It, it was like, I don't know about this wall. Seems like things are a little crazy. Like, like they were like questioning each other. They were in two different booths, like back to back. They weren't like at the table, and they just were like friendly, friendly, nice men. And they it just I listened to their conversation come up, and like it seemed like it's a little nuts around here. Like it's like I don't think this is like they questioned the way it was. I was of course the first thing I thought as I live here. It's like Hicks, racists, bigots. They don't love anyone. No, they're hateful. No. These are gentlemen who just were questioning things. And there is, like he, like Maya says, there's so many people in the middle. The polarization of the right and the left, If the problem with the right, I think Aaron Sorkin said it, was like, the reason the right exists is because the left thinks they're dumb. And the reason the left exists is because the right is dumb. And all this other stuff, like I can't remember the right thing, but like it's it's this extreme thing, like, I've seen a lady yell at, at a person at a theme park for wearing a bandana because it was cultural appropriation. Like I've seen horrible, horrible leftist, horrid things, like this woke shirt bullshit. Like what are you doing? What are you helping? And then I've seen absolute bigot. Like I was beaten up as a kid for being albino. Someone called me a snow. Oh. You might want to edit that out, but I I That's was. Right. I've been called a sand. Yeah, uh, they they did it. 
Um, and I remember like laughing. I was like, that is amazing because you, clearly your dad said that because you couldn't have come up with that in eighth grade. Right. Like, I, the extremism is here. But if we pulled the, the pendulum back, like we're all bullies at, at that same time. Like, like nowadays, I think people who are, are attacking dumb rednecks and the right are just as bad as, as rednecks running into people. Like we're all bad. We should just be able to have a conversation. Like those gentlemen in that, that diner, if, if we brought a couple hipsters and they sat down and I said, hey, be nice, I bet you at the end of the day, they could have had a great conversation. And that's kind of the, the idea of, of this is a country of different people that should be able to not bully each other. But unfortunately, think about it like this. Like most of the people yelling on internet now were nerds and losers. They were bullied and now they have a vehicle to bully other people. With anonymity in most cases. Exactly. And it's not just the left or the right. All these people are the the people who were pushed so down. The best part is the trolls that don't even believe what they're saying. They're just they, they don't care. They're angry. what's going to push the buttons. They were they hateful. They going to trigger. So they're just they may completely disagree with it. And there's people that go and still type it up there. Yep. Hit enter and walk the fuck away, knowing that that's going to because blow they hate some everything. Up. Yeah, and you know if if we react to that shit, well, we're no better. Yeah. Well, the, one of the good news is, and I, it's a metaphor that I, I've thought of, um, I don't know if anybody else has used it, but we talk about, you know, the polar opposites of these, uh, of the parties and stuff. Think about the globe. How many people live at the poles? It's kind of where we're at with the thing. You know, most of the people live in that nice little center area, right? Around, yeah. I mean, closer you get to the equator, more populated it gets. Yeah. More, yeah. So then that's, that's how I really think it is. So, um, so we're getting uh, getting away from a lot of stuff. I wanted to ask you a bit um, about what what's been going on. So a, a lot of people know that you did work with corn, uh, but they don't know a lot else that you've done other than that, and particularly some of the things you have going on currently. Uh, what what are you able to talk about? I am able to talk about many things. I'm currently trying to uh, be a polygamist. Um, I would like uh, June to be my second wife. Okay. Um, okay. I've been working on that under the table. Did you get the vibe early? If I didn't, I, I apologize. We'll work on it. Um, okay, well, the vibe wasn't strong enough. Uh, mm. See, this is the problem. Um, as far as music, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of. We had so much politics. I just wanted to bring some love into the room. I just want you to know there, there, there's not good. enough love. Oh, we love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I have. So I I did the corn thing for a while. Um, I have not done that for a bit. I've gotten to like you know pop out and hang out with them off and on, but um, I've done a bunch of stuff. I uh, if you guys like the Lego Batman movie, have you ever seen that? I have not, but uh, have you seen the Lego Batman movie? Mm -hmm. Then you guys suck because I can't plug this properly. No, um, really, well, tell me about it. Uh, well, check it out. Um, the uh, song um, when when if in the preview when Batman's like Batman killing everyone, doing all this stuff. Uh, Will Arnett's song, I'm All the Background Vocals on that. Okay. Um, I've been doing a lot of studio work. I played with, uh, I'm in a band, Time of the Dragon, with my brother. Um, I play in a band called Superfix. Um, but most importantly, um, I'm doing my solo project right now. Oh, shit. It is a brand new, very, very hyped, wonderful thing that is, uh, people are liking it. I'm telling the internet. No, no I, uh, it's. I'm recording a record. Uh, it's happening in August. I'm recording in Nashville, L.A., and in Las Vegas. And uh, next year we should have something. Well, I heard him play at Lucky Strike. Oh yeah, you were at the show. Yeah, it was. Great. That was kind of the 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 first draft of that stuff. Did mm -hmm. it suck? It was great. I, mean, I still remember. I'm bummed too because I was I was actually going to head over there. Wait, were you play with Time of the Dragon over there too? Uh, we did uh, recently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When that I played my I solo stuff, were you physically attracted to me? Be honest. It's Possibly. okay. All right, sweet. So it worked. <laughs> we have to revisit that moment in time, I think. Well, the songs are really good. It was really catchy. And, oh, uh, thank you. You know that one song that... Oh, my God. What was we song could called? all be happy. Yeah, it was just like... Wow, you remember the melody. That, girl, yeah. um, that, that should be on radio right now. That's going to be... A, that's, that's actually you doing that made me so very happy and you validated me. Um, 
and I don't rely on validation, but it certainly helps. But it's nice when it comes from out of right field, right? Where the fact like, that you oh, remember the show from a few months ago. Yes. Uh, so I'm. That song was written with me and my brother about twelve years ago. Um, the main chorus, and um, I was in a band called Vimic. Um, it's on permanent hiatus. Maybe, maybe not permanent hiatus. Oh, who knows? It's there's a record done. Hopefully, it comes out. But that was the last metal band I did, and it. Everything kind of just didn't work out, and uh, I worked with a producer named Kato Kandwana, Kandwana, and he died in a motorcycle accident. He was like one of my best friends, and I woke up, like we were working, he was suddenly like interested in my stuff, and we were working on it, and we were doing all our things. He was the guy who got me the Lego thing, and nice. I was working all the time with him, and I was in a room, quarter, like probably half the size, like this, this was our little place every day like you know five days a week for a year and we just had the most fun and then i woke up the next day and he died run over dead and i was crushed and i just uh i just remember well i'm not gonna get a lot of money here anymore i'm not gonna work in la as hard as i did he liked my stuff it's i'm not gonna worry about doing the metal i don't want to do the metal thing yeah. I'm done with the metal thing. I'm. I just want to do the shit that I used to do with my brother and me, like acoustic guitars, like. And I love a certain kind of music. I. I mean, I listen to Tom Waits and Typo Negative and. Like, dude, you'll dig this, dude. My very f no, sorry, it's my second show. My first show was opening up a, a certain park um, at like 15 years old. I was still 15. But my my first real show that I played uh, was opening for Typo Negative. My favorite band is Typhoon. So you guys know I got to meet him, right? I did not. Oh, fuck. I didn't tell you guys about that. I got to meet Peter Steele in 2007 or 8. Um, I was touring with Korn. We were doing the European festivals, like Rock and Ring. And um, and Joey, um, he was with Korn at that time. So it was 2007. And he knew I loved him. Like, I've, I've met everybody. Everybody in the music industry, and most people are really nice, but I've never given a fuck about anybody. Like, as far as, like, ooh. Yeah, I've never been starstruck. Yeah, it's never, never. happened to me. I was starstruck. I keep, I keep waiting. I know that one day it'll happen. Peter Steele happened. I've only been star starstruck by uh, him and the guys from Top Gear. But, uh, oh, it's, oh it's, yeah. It's, we'll talk about them. But, like, awesome. Joey brought me into his back lounge. I have a beer in my hand, and he's sitting there. He's six seven. He's just filling the lounge up. Like, How you doing? You want some wine? He's got his wine. I have a beer. I'm like, ah, I just have some wine. And I, he passes me his wine, which looks like a beer bottle in his hand. And I pick it up, and it's like, thank you. <laughs> and we sit down and talk. And nicest guy in the world. The, the thing that got me about him, and this is what I love about certain people, um, it came up like you know Joey said. I was albino, or like I said it, or something like Joe was like, oh, You're albino. I was like, Well, I'm albinistic. It's like, it's different, but it doesn't matter. No, educate me. Genuinely interested in knowing the difference between albinism and being albino. And like, listened, told us stories, but also like just wanted to hear about us. Like, I'm like a true, brilliant person, like just nice. He just yeah. wanted to hang out. I think a lot of that's how you, uh, interact with them uh, a lot of times a lot of these people I was shitting my pants inside but like like when he offered me wine like, no you're Peter Zoo like no, I didn't do any of that but like inside I was like no you're Peter Zoo <laughs> but he was the kindest most wonderful he gave me his number told me the best place to get pizza um, we were going to meet him and then I remember I was roofing with my father to help him out uh, and I got the call that he died two weeks before I was going on tour and being in New York and I was going to see him and it was just like heartbreaking but I got the gift of like hanging out with him like there's a guy who does and says horrible things nicest guy in the world the guy would pick you up off the ground give the shirt off his back did it like I saw it like he's like here's, a, here's wine for the road I was like well we're going to the like no no just in case like just wanted you to be happy and that that beautiful like like sentiment that no. like you're in my house his little lounge was his house Called his assistant, make sure that there was more wine coming. And he's like, "We're gonna get some food. Make sure you guys get enough." And we're like, "We're gonna. We have bus call. Well, we're gonna get it anyway in case you stay late." Like, wanted to be 
that person. Yeah. And it wasn't showing well, Authentically up. that way, yeah, versus... Authentic, a, uh, yeah. The authentic, authenticity of, of him was absolutely brilliant. Um, best band in the world. And even when I sing other things, I always tell people, like, if you want to know my, my inspiration, it's Tom Waits and Peter Steele. Those are my vocal inspirations every time. And people are like, well, how does that... That doesn't sound anything like that. I'm like, well, that means I'm fucking good. Idiots. Well, I think that's actually really great that you don't sound anything like your inspiration because you're making it you. Oh, yeah. You're it's, making it your creativity. It's the humor. The humor of both of them is, is what uh, kills me. Like, I remember seeing the poster that, that they had. They were all standing there, and I didn't know that uh -huh. they weren't from this thing. And they were all standing. It was all green, and they were like, type O negative, even colder and darker than their Icelandic homeland. Uh -huh. I thought they were from Iceland. And then I realized they were from New York and that that was a Bud Light spoof. This blood's for you. And I was like, I remember like, oh my God, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> they're fucking hilarious. And they're writing the most beautiful dark music. And that's mm -hmm. what's giving me my sense of humor. And like all the like, like my goal is to write music that makes you want to kill yourself, but you don't. Mm -hmm. Like that's like the dream. Like that you, I want you to chew on the barrel of the gun and then laugh and cry and, and live your life. Like that's, that's kind of what I want. And Tom Waits and, and Typo Negative did that for me. Then here's the thing, like if you feel sad and if you feel like killing yourself, it's actually good to listen to music that actually says that. Absolutely. And emotionally validate you, although you hate that. That's what music does for us. No, music, I'm, I'm fine with it. Music is allowed. That's what we have music for. I want that to do it. I just don't want to have to go home and say, hi, how are you? <laughs> the song should do that for me. Yeah, and I think that's also the reason that I don't really try to put political message in any of the music that I do. Because that's not for me. Yeah. I want to take refuge in music about anything. Yeah. It, it, there's nothing wrong with whatever is being written in music. I can talk about anything, and there's nothing wrong with it. I want to take refuge in music instead of trying to pass on my agenda on other people. I creating divisiveness to is going to create divisiveness. And like, I don't mind creating drama or writing something dark, but I, I love, the one thing I loved about the, the changing back in the day, remember we had pop girls and R&B people and every single person at our shows. And it was always the way, and every band I've been in has always had every single kind of person at the show because we never had any, like, we were never machismo. I, I can't play macho. I can't do it. And we like we were not like gonna. But we had army guys they used to throw me around. Like we played clubs like with army guys. And they're like this is the best thing. And they would throw me around and buy me drinks and like. And we play like gay clubs and we play everything. And everyone loved us because we were just trying to have a good time, joy, like creating joy. The the heart of it. Like I don't really feel like I don't want to single out someone. Social commentary is easy because everyone can relate to social commentary. Bullshit is bullshit. But if I start putting my bullshit on one side, this bullshit is liberal, this bullshit is this, this bullshit is gay, this bullshit is straight, this, like, suddenly no. But every, I love seeing military and idiots and smart people and nerds and lesbians and trannies with butt plugs inside themselves all singing the same thing with me because we're all on the same page. Right. We hate bullshit. All of our bullshit might be different, but we're all sick of it. And then we can all get a beer afterwards. And if you, I can drink a beer with you, I love you. It's easy peasy. Yeah, because it's uh, the point for music, for me anyway. I mean, I grew up, I was born and raised in Korea, and I didn't understand a word of English when I was younger. But I listened to all this music from America and Europe and all that. I didn't listen, understand anything that was being said, but I was deeply connected to those music instead of, you know, those Korean K-pop. What stuff. was your first big band like that you loved? Like, what was your what was your like band? My band, ah, I think the one that, that made you wet in your whistle. Uh, I think it was at first it was Dream Theater, and then I moved to Typo, and then bands like Theater of Tragedy, like gothic metal bands and Paradise Lost. Then I went to like Catatonia and stuff like gotcha. that. Gotcha. Um, but what, I, what I'm trying to say is that words didn't matter. It was 
emotion. emotion. And nobody cared. And you could all be the same kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. I love that. I yeah. love that. And I think that's the, for me, that's why music means so yeah. much to me. That we have all different problems. We always have problems. Everyone has problems. We should but be able to come to the show and sweat with each other, have right. a few drinks, and jump around and rub against each other. Maybe we'll all get laid. Because, yeah. I mean, Everybody's going to get laid. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's the point, right? Why are we doing any of this? To get laid. Thank you. And you know what? He, <laughs> and, what and said, this I mean. is actually a real point that people need to remember that uh, let's not be afraid of sex. We're all doing this to get laid. You're, uh, you're protesting PETA or you're in PETA to get laid. You're protesting the military to get laid. We're all protesting or, or antagonizing or doing stuff to get laid. We all want to get laid. Guys, gals, and thems and theys, <laughs> we can all get laid much easier. Come to my house. I'll fuck everything. <laughs> if these guys get lucky when this, this camera turns <coughs> off, I'm going to have them. You ready for this? I hope you're ready. It's going to get weird. Fuck crazy you get from this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just so you know, parentheses, I probably fuck them after this camera's off. <laughs> well, yeah, it's really, uh, I think you're very uh, present in this moment. I, I can feel that you are here. You're not anywhere else. And that's um, really hard for people. I mean, it was hard for me for the longest time. And I, I really appreciate that. You don't care about the bullshit. Like, we, so here you are. What matters right now? Like, we are together. Are we really together here right now? Or are we just self-absorbed self with our own problems? Thinking about the next thing. I'm just lonely and I want people in my apartment. Is that why I'm you're just doing scared. This? I'm scared of the oh, you got a lot of darkness inside you, Maya, but you're a kind person, and you want the same thing I want. I'm trying to be a kind person, bro. You're doing right. fine. You've always been fine at it. I'm trying, if, if nothing else, at least I'll try to give back to the community by having stellar uh, members of the community like yourselves here. Guys, we're just, we just, if, if we just put our heads down and have a few barbecues and don't allow people to bring us down, that's going to spread. Every single nice thing we do by not being ridiculous is great. And we're not talking about fake positivity here. No, we're talking about, about being present yeah. and think about what matters. Every day I wake up, my, my rule is when I wake up, if I'm at home, my rule is if you come to my house, you're going to be better fed and you're going to laugh. And then you leave. That's okay. all I ask for. And if I go out, I can't feed you because I don't have an oven. But all I want to make sure is that you've laughed once because of me. Like, I just want to make you laugh. I just want to make somebody happy. Every person I meet, if I can, make them happy. The one thing I don't want to do is ruin your day. And if I do, on accident, if I step on your foot or if I fart in the elevator, I'm going to say sorry and I'm going to mean it. Like, like it's just so simple. You're going to have the farting in elevators. <laughs> I can see you just, please wait. Hold it. Hold it. The elevator's almost here. Come on. Come yeah. on. Still be ready yeah. to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. I... I between the spicy food and the diet, that's why I was thinking yeah. about it. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh. I, dude, listen, spicy farts. I, my farts Those are poor so... poor bastards in the elevator. You know what's funny? It's like, if, if I'm just eating the things I normally eat, it's fine. Like, people think that, like, like I'm eating habaneros and drinking beer. And I'm like, no, my farts are like warm breezes. But if I, I do diets every now and then. I'm doing a diet right now, which is fucking brutal. And I'm eating like two pounds of green vegetables a day. And oh, dude, that's got to be good for I you. I am literally lifting out. I'm losing. I lost six pounds. It's great. But I'm fucking lifting myself off the seat. Like, <laughs> like, I. I'm not vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> I actually ate less today because I knew I was going to be here. Like, Oh, thank you. Thank dude, you. Dude, it's the kind of fart that would melt plastic. It's fucked, dude. I'm these scared. Are, these are nice mahogany chairs. Treat them nicely. I appreciate no, no, this whole, that. this whole. Little thing you got here, like with the, the I don't want to do. I, I I don't want to fart next to that base. Well, I had horses, so I understand. Oh That's my god, you had horses? Mm -hmm. Where'd you? Are you, you a princess? Does, don't you? Huh? You still do. Yeah. Are you a princess? No. And do you need a prince? Because, <laughs> like, I could be that guy. Like, remember, like the Johnny Depp movie where he's like with the horses and everyone's like, like really attracted to him. Like that would be me. Like, Here's I'm a, the thing. Taming the horses. Really, it has nothing to do with luxury. It's like a farm style, really laid back. All right, just, but just imagine though, like like if like like the horses and I'm like reining them in. <laughs> How are we doing? 
Is this working? Of course it is. Now it's time. All right. <laughs> yeah. Let me try. What, what, what? She, she's feeling hotter. She's feeling hotter. All right, you're getting the vibe. See, I don't, like, horses. That felt good. I see I you in commercials, dream. man. I, I see you in commercials. <laughs> Wait. Horses. Fabio better watch out. <laughs> Was that the guy's name, Fabio? Fabio was, he's, like, that's so 90s, which is great for me, because that's where I live. Look. Horses. <laughs> all right, yeah, all right, I got it. All right, good. That was the one. Uh, I had to work that out. Uh, oh, man. Oh yeah, dude, I might as well get a little more of that. Yeah. Why not? Fucking. It's been weird. I was going to actually ask you, like, what inspires you, like you said. Absolutely. Well, well, so did I? Did I fucking high road your question? But what about what about current inspiration? Um, current inspiration right now. Um, oh, there's. I'm I'm finding magical bands randomly, and um, my big thing. And I as I, I teach at MI every now and then. Don't worry. That's just that going. Letting us know we're we're on about ten minutes left. Got it. Um, so I I tell students like. Pop on over to Amoeba to buy a CD. And it's not because I want to like raise CD sales. That's gonna happen in 20 years. Records are coming back. But like like there's these magical bands out there that just sing brilliantly. Like uh, there's a band called uh, Nightbeds. There's a band called uh, there's this old stuff that I've been listening to, uh, Slow Dive, um, Low, this old like like shoegaze, like ambient. Like, just noisy, droney shit. And it's just giving me joy. Um, I just love that this, the album sounds like shit in a certain way, but there was, like, beautiful noise and just brilliant lyrics. And it's just sad. And, and it was the this, this sad, like, every... I Here's what I want in music. I want it to feel like I'm pulling off a scab or a Band-Aid or a Band-Aid attached to a scab. Like, I want it to hurt so good, you know? And there's these bands that do, yeah, it's like, with a slow rip, like, just like, Aah! You do that until it just doesn't go anymore. You yeah. know that point where you hit it, and you're like, okay, now I just got to yeah. do the rip. And then, and then you get that release, that, and that's the chorus. Um, and then that look of how much did I really damage yeah. it. Yeah. Have you guys ever listened to a band it? called Pedro the Lion? Listen to Pedro the Lion, guys. Um, smoke some weed and lay down and listen to Pedro the Lion. Fuck. Oh. It's going to just touch your heart. My top, one of my top bands that not a lot of people know about that I'm going to say in every single, I'm doing like four podcasts this month. Um, you guys are my favorite. Awesome. Uh, Starflyer 59. It's the best band in the world. I played it for you back in the day when we did yeah, lots I, of drugs. I remember he, uh, hearing it, but I can't remember any of the yeah. tunes. Yeah. Um, it, it was like I turned people onto that Tom Waits and Typo. I actually remember shit. I remember you playing that over at uh, your where uh, your brother and your sister lived three doors down from him. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I was if I showed up somewhere, I was doing that. Like I wanted because, and not everybody got it, but the people who got it became close friends and. Um, the things that inspire me are, are is, is just music that just grabs you and is quiet. Like, you know, that quiet, beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. There's this band, uh, so yeah, Nightbeds, uh, there's, a, there's a song called Even Though I Try. It starts, even though, even though, even though, even though, even though, and it builds, and I'm like, fuck! It's the most gorgeous song. Uh, I think it's Even Though We Try. I didn't want to sing the lyrics in case they were suing. Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. See how smart I am? Yeah, I did you. that. I thought of that. And with, it's, uh, yeah. But it's funny, too, because I think I actually, I think you played me the tune. It's soul-crushing, and I... Maybe not even you. I think I've I think I've heard that from it's, it's, in multiple places. Oh, at the chorus. And it just keeps going. Like you know when it starts off pretty in a song and they always like change it up? Like remember that yeah, where, where, where it gets a, 
I hate it when there's something where it's like, man, you guys are doing that perfectly. And then they start changing the point where it's like, oh, man, I just want to hear that fucking great line again. Prime example is that Arcade Fire song. The first one to have with the wild things. Um, remember that Arcade Fire song? Um, uh, uh, new line if I said it did. Uh, it. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it's, it does that the whole thing. And then at the end, they do this, like, oh, 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 and they go fast at the end, mm -hmm. like this David Bowie, like, dancing thing, which I, I know. I, I, know, I, know, exactly. Exactly. I know what like, you're talking about, yeah. That ending, fuck that song in the ass. And I will say it. Fuck that ending. It was perfect, and then you fucked it for me. It's like, you ruined the song, and then I watched that fucking movie, The Wild Things. It was just depressing. It wasn't a good movie. So, like, that song's ruined for me. Don't change your endings, kids. If you have a really good demo, like evil slow song, and you suddenly feel like you want to do a like a full time like like champion march, fuck you. Don't do it. Yeah, make it a separate song. God damn it. That I love Arcade Fire, but fuck them for that. They they ruined that movie and they ruined my life. Like I was depressed when I heard that. Like putting the snare on the two was literally like punching Jesus in the dick for me. It was like watching like your hero get. It's like watching Michael J. Fox actually get Parkinson's. Was that beat. Uh, like I was like, oh okay, everything's done. It was a fucking travesty, and I hope they hear this. <laughs> fucking stupid ending. You ruined that fucking song. Fuck you guys. I love you guys, but fuck. Yeah, I know. coming from a guy who's always looking for ha happiness and for you know. I did get dark there, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, oh, well at least we know. Yeah. As far as it's music good. goes, don't fuck with a good song. Then you'll get my. I wonder if they're the producers saying we just need a different ending. Like, uh, no, so that, the, these that guys. Don't like worry guys, about a lot, though. It's. I can smell a producer because I do that a lot. I'm I'm after the enemy a lot of times. Maybe. Did you think that that was part of no, the no, songwriting? I think, you no, know, yeah, because these guys are like random Canadians. They love this shit and they love David Bowie and they thought it was going to be great. And it was. It was a great idea. Is, but what is they a, did is they ruined it. I do think and it this is, is just my opinion. Idea. I don't remember the title, but it's the one. Oh, 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 oh. It's like the, the big, the first arcade fire. Uh, wait, that's we can look it up after this. I, just, yeah. I can't play it on the uh, thing because it'll. Yeah, and actually, I think I just sang fucking uh, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, Infinite Sadness song. But it, <coughs> everybody knows the fucking Arcade Fire song I'm doing. Um, I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. All right. Fuck them. They ruined it, and I, I, I will say it face to face because they're Canadian, and I'll fight them. Funny thing about Canadians... I don't hold it against them because they're Canadian too much. Oh, they're the best people in the world. And I would like to plug one thing on this show. The show Letterkenny. Letterkenny. Yes. If you guys haven't watched Letterkenny, it's the best show. It's Canadian. I love it. And, What's uh, it on? It's on Hulu. Okay. Watch it. Binge it. It's going to be the greatest thing that ever happened to you. It's the best show on TV. And I don't have Hulu on Oh, but you I'm can steal, steal somebody else's code. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I'm stealing someone's. <laughs> Is that okay to say? I'm, hey, Hulu. I can't prove anything. We can get a lot more people if you suddenly... Um, Hulu. 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 Throw us a Hulu. bone. Throw us a bone. Yeah. I'm about to have three-way sex with these people. Come on, throw us a bone. <laughs> well, so uh, we only got a couple minutes left, but... Uh, so right now, are you uh, you got your own thing going? You're recording some other stuff. Are you? What's the best way if somebody wants to get a hold of you to check out your work? Uh, somebody wants to hire you to come in, do some some background vocals, some lead vocals. Like, what's your uh, the Kalen Chase the, Facebook is the, the way. Kalen Chase Facebook. Yeah, so I think it's uh, Kalen Chase, and you'll see my stupid face on there, and uh, just go the, go there. I think I've killed all the people who uh, stole my, my identity before. You know, I, I did go looking, and I, I think that there's a, the, none of them. Uh, none of them were light enough. No, no, those they remember. This was actually we talked about this like back in the day, like that one douche nozzle who like stole my fucking MySpace and what? was answering fans. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't remember that. Oh yeah, Jesus. His name was like Lee or something like that. Dan Welby worked with him for a while. We all like. Oh, it was an actual dude that you. Cosmo, like, yeah, yeah. Oh 
my god. Yeah, he stole my fucking Facebook ID or MySpace thing. And then I, I like was on the road and said, like, hey, I'm not answering these questions because these aren't funny. And um, Chicago just went on it like a rabid dog. Yeah. And dude tried to like get back. It was like, just, no one was doing it. I just want to make sure your fans knew. I was like, yeah. But that was the last time because then I eviscerated him really hard. Yeah. I, so, yeah, uh, just Facebook, just really. Facebook Kalen Chase and, and message me. I'm, I'm not going to eviscerate you. Unless you're an ass, in which case, fuck, dude, you're gonna die. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, it's been great, guys. Yeah, man. Well, I really appreciate you coming out, and uh, we'll definitely have to get you uh, in here. One, uh, some other things. I know that you got some stuff that you can't really talk about right now, but we'll have to get See, you well, back. In the I would just love to like yell at things with you guys because that was like cathartic. Like I haven't yelled at stuff in a while. Like, and it was we so a, gentle. We like, got a lot more to yell. Actually, we had talked about talking about a few that we didn't even get into. No. I think half the stuff we talked about beforehand. But time, no. the time goes by when you're having fun. Yeah, I know we we could raise some whiskers, you know, and especially you and I with our sexual attraction to each other. Like, June, you and I have a lot of history here that we need to recreate. Like, this could be good, guys. Like, see what happens. You ever seen the movie Clue? Like, imagine that with underpants. I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> we have a lot of music and movies. Yes, and music and movies. movies. That's what I said, Maya. <laughs> Wait, which is, where's the camera where I can wink at? Oh, right here, right here, right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, hey, thanks for uh, hanging out, checking us out. Uh, please like, subscribe, share. And, if you know, uh, you're a fucking communist. Um, but if you're a communist, that's okay. But that's not my opinion. <laughs>